Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Jim Olson, Assistant Executive Director of the NTCA, and thanks for attending today's webinar. Today's webinar is titled Intelligent Enclosure Solutions, an Introduction to Ventilated Facade Assemblies. Discover the components and terminology associated with ventilated facades. Learn about the major types of facade cladding and assemblies, benefits, challenges, and opportunities. Learn the benefit of a ventilated facade and understand the positive contributions to our env uh, environment and architecture. You will understand the components and terminology associated with ventilated facades. You'll review the major types of ventilated facade cladding assemblies and understand com common problems. Undercover the benefits of a ventilated facade and understand the positive contributions to our environment and job site safety. Our sponsor for this presentation is Bostic. Before we continue, you know I have some business to take care of. Today's webinar will be muted. Please use the questions area on your computer to type in your questions. We will answer your questions at the end of this presentation. All of our webinars are available to watch at any time on the NPCA YouTube channel shortly after the webinars are presented. Please go to the NTCA YouTube channel, subscribe, and you'll be notified of all upcoming NTCA videos, webinars, um, and uh, this really will give you uh, the best way to, uh, an easier access to watch these current and past programs. So please go to the NTCA YouTube channel. If the audio on your computer is poor, call the number on your invite to this webinar and listen on your phone. Today's speakers, we have two today. We're very lucky to have two great speakers today. Our first speaker is Adam Abel. He's Boston. He's Boston's market. Boston's. He's Boston's. No, he's Boston's market manager for surface preparation products, tile and stone insulation systems, and sealants. Adam joined Boston in 2012 after spending nine years at Nice Tile and Marble. He's a LEED lead green associate and a graduate of the University of Kentucky. Welcome, Adam. Our second speaker today will be Daniel Sanchez. Boston's, geez, I keep wanting to say Boston. So you guys in Boston know you're, you're, in, you're in Milwaukee area, right? Yes, and we are. Uh, More that. Company, yeah. uh, actually, the company Daniel's, was founded in, Bo in Boston, so you're not uh, that wrong. Uh, good, good. Thank you for uh, helping me out there, Daniel. Daniel is Bostic's Latin American National Sales Manager for the Construction and Consumer Division. He joined Bostic in 2007, and since then, he has been working on introducing innovative solutions in the region, such as Bostic's panel track system for the installation of ventilated facades. I want to welcome both Adam and Daniel. Thank you for being here. I look forward to this presentation. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. All right, so uh, today's presentation is, is Jim overviewed for us is the use of gauge porcelain tile panels in ventilated facades. Uh, this is a system that Bostic has been a part of for uh, more than 30 years throughout the rest of the world. And as a result of a lot of specifications that have been developed in the United States of recent years and products being imported into the United States, uh, we've decided to commercialize this solution here in North America. So we've got several hundred buildings that have been completed using the panel tax system for ventilated facades in North America. Uh, we'll wrap up today by walking through some of those uh, projects. So we'll start off the presentation today with an, a little bit of an overview on, on tile, some of the history of tile, uh, gauge porcelain tile panels, some of the benefits to these items, general applications, an overview of the use and benefits of gauge porcelain tiles and ventilated facades, and then uh, cover some installation methods. There's, there's a variety of different ways to uh, apply or fix these panels to the facade of a building, and uh, panel tech is one of these types of solutions that we wanted to overview. So in our, our most recent gauge porcelain tile presentation with the NTCA, uh, we reviewed a lot about uh, Call it the, the origin of tile and its use and uh, the dating back to Mesopotamia. There's obviously more current uses of tile that would be in the categories of porcelains, ceramic, uh, pressed tiles, which is 
what much of the market has is, is, uh, been founded on in the United States and North America. And then, of course, uh, the evolution uh, thereon is what we'll talk about today. Uh, there's mosaic tiles, quarry tiles, glazed wall tiles, and then, of course, the, call it the slightly more specialty glass tiles and then natural stones. So a very wide variety of different types of materials that are used in, in the United States uh, as tile materials and, and formats. So we'll walk through really a, a little bit about the, the latest type of tile and you know call it some of the most modern tile that's in the market, which would be these gauged porcelain tile panels. And these gauged porcelain tile panels are, are made in a different format than traditional dust press tiles. Uh, they go through a different manufacturing process which provides a variety of results that are more positive than the traditional manufacturing process. Uh, they have a little bit less in, in terms of embodied stress, and they can be made into larger size formats. So as you can see uh, on the image of the left of a tile going through a press in a format that's probably less than 18 inches, this one may be a, a 12 or 13 inch tile. And then the tile that's on the image on the right, as you can see the, the person next to it, this one's in the realm of one meter by three meter. So a variety of, you know, call it non-traditional sizes. When I mention one meter by three meter or, or five foot by 10 foot, uh, those are some of the more common sizes that you see. Uh, you see thicknesses that range anywhere from three millimeters to six millimeters, and then on upwards of 30 millimeters in, in a variety of formats. So there's a lot that's unfolding in this overall category, and with this is driving a, a variety of new installation products. Uh, Bostic has uh, led part of this marketplace with the uh, introduction of Bosti Set a few years back, and then from there, developments of primers, levelers, as well as mortars and grouts that are optimized for gauge porcelain tile installation. So of course, that's where we segue in today for uh, the exterior of buildings. But as you can see with these tile types, um, you've got a, a variety of lower weight solutions in comparison to uh, traditional tiles. So a traditional porcelain is in the realm of three eighths of an inch thick and somewhere in the realm of four pounds per square foot. These materials that are 5.6 millimeter and three and a half millimeter will weigh anywhere from 1.6 to 2.9 pounds per square foot. So a pretty significant uh, benefit from a less weight perspective. That comes into play from the, the engineering perspective, the, the structures that you can put these materials over, and then a variety of the, the use environments. So there's a couple of, call it standard definitions that are given by ANSI, and these are, are gonna be found in uh, ANSI 137.3. And they call out the definitions of these gauged porcelain tile panels, which of course can be used in a, in a variety of applications, whether floors or walls or, um, or other. But I'll, I'll cover the first definition as this is uh, one of the ones that's most prevalent for us, but the back layered gauge porcelain tile or panel slab is a gauge tile or tile panel slab with a material that's generally made of mesh and it's been attached to the back of a tile after firing for reinforcement purposes. Uh, these back layered materials by definition must not exceed 20% of the tile or the tile panel slabs thickness. So this is a, a benefit that you'll see with these. And of course, this is part of that driver as well for more high performance materials to enter the marketplace for tile bonding. So these tiles, these gauge porcelain tile panels, uh, they're design and fashion oriented. They allow a lot of unique application types to be able to be conducted with uh, a little bit less in terms of overall uh, structure and uh, a variety of different benefits from the design aspect, which we'll show some pictures today on a, a number of these slides that, that give you a feel for uh, how these materials can be uh, design friendly. Uh, of course, for anybody that's ever worked with or, or knows porcelain tile, uh, this is one of the most durable building materials that's, that's available in the marketplace. Uh, porcelain has got a, a very hard surface, um, extremely durable, and a lot of sustainability as a result of that long life cycle associated with porcelain tiles. So these gauge porcelains are, are lower weight, which we covered. Uh, that's a result of that reduced thickness of material. Uh, in many cases, the flexural strength is improved because of this process, uh, as well as even the impact strength can be improved as a result of these processes. Uh, these can result in reduced demolition. Of course, on the inside of the building, this gives you the ability to go over top of a 
uh, existing tile with the use of a, a primer like Total Prime or a, uh, adhesive such as Bostix Bosti Set. Uh, this provides a uh, reduced grout joints as well in the market, so that's a little bit less to keep clean and, and maintain, and then a, uh, a long life cycle as well of these products. So they result in a, a lot of indoor air quality. They're easy to sterilize, hypoallergenic, there's zero VOC, uh, and then even when they're paired up with gauge porcelain tiles, they can result in uh, some sound reduction as well. So these tiles are actually excellent for exterior applications as well. They're resistant to chemicals. They're highly resistant to frost and freeze thaw. So they're, they're excellent from an exterior demand perspective. They have a very high fire and heat resistance, as well as uh, a great wear rating and scratching UV resistance. So as you can see, As you can see in this particular image, the uh, gauge porcelain tile panels that are, in this case, five foot by 10 foot, are being used both in the uh, interior of an application as well as in an exterior application, providing a lot of design continuity uh, from interior to exterior applications. In the next, you'll see gauge porcelain tiles being used as focal points, statements, as well as even feature walls. So in this particular case, you can see the book match stone used as a fireplace surround in a hotel setting. They've been excellent for use in showers, reducing grout joints and providing a, a very high end look. Also suitable for floors, walls, countertops, showers, wainscoting. And then some of these materials allow for uh, the use of radius and bending more of a radius as well. So then there's the introduction to the exterior applications or the facade applications. And of course, the, the facade applications can come into play in a, a variety of places. Uh, we're starting to see them more in uh, restaurant usage, uh, hotels, car dealerships. Uh, there's a variety of applications and exteriors that, that get the ventilated facade method or tile on a facade method as well. So in terms of what is a facade, in, in many cases throughout history, people think of uh, brick, stone, real stone products, uh, thin veneer brick, but the facade is essentially the outer face of the building. And, and in today's case, we're gonna be talking about gauge porcelain tile panels as the facade material. Uh, although there's a variety of different materials that could be used, uh, this is essentially that the outer skin of a building. And in the case of tile, there's, there's a lot of benefits that could be driven as a result of uh, of course, the way the tile is made. So I'll cover a, a brief bit about the uh, why it's important to talk about uh, the ventilated facade method to give you a little bit of background, and then we'll move on to uh, additional elements. Uh, but basically, if you look at the uh, global amount of energy consumption, uh, it's, it's really around 36% of global final energy and 39% of energy-related carbon dioxide is a, a result of upstream power generation that goes into buildings. So essentially uh, residential and commercial buildings account for around 40% of overall energy consumption, which means that buildings are consuming a lot of the energy that we have uh, and, and go through. So we'll talk a little bit about how ventilated facades can help with uh, energy inside buildings. Um, in terms of uh, greenhouse gas creation, uh, buildings, create around two thirds of the greenhouse gases uh, as a result of uh, burning fossil fuels. And these are obviously a, a very high amount of energy sources coming from fossil fuel burning. And then of course, uh, this particular image was taken from the Urban Green Council, but you can see that uh, buildings today, when you look at a glass building is getting an insulation value of R2 and R3. So we're seeing a, a lot of uh, attempted legislation to close down the window to wall ratio um, and build with more materials that are opaque or non-translucent like tiles or other materials so that you have more protection from weather, better insulation and better building performance as a result. So a ventilated facade has got a, a couple of different names. So you'll see the name double skin facade or double enclosure facades and rain screens used in the, the facade terminology. 
Uh, this is a construction method where there's a, a physical separation between the decorative facade and the interior structural wall of the building. So essentially two different walls, the main wall of the building, then the ventilated facade or the cladding material. So they've got a, a variety of different benefits, which we'll overview, but many of them are associated with energy, acoustic, uh, thermal efficiency, functional values, as well as passive venting and uh, the rain screen effect, which we'll talk about as well. And then, of course, what we know uh, very well in the tile industry is the overall designability that tile brings to a project. I mean, this is one of the most designer friendly materials that exist and uh, ability to customize with tile is, is very high. So uh, ventilated facades can be used on the face of a building over the entire building or simply just a, a portion of the building. As you can see with this high rise here in this, this particular image, uh, they've used it on a couple of different sides of the building to, uh, uh, as well as used a, a light color of tile to reduce the overall amount of heat gain that's associated by the sun that's shining into the building. The light colored tile reflects uh, heat very well. Uh, it also improves uh, nighttime visibility, but this particular building used uh, tiles to uh, disperse some of that heat and use a ventilated facade in a, a couple of uh, strategic areas that, that would take on heat. Uh, so ventilated facades are, are really one of the most uh, environmentally friendly cladding materials for buildings. Uh, there's also a terminology of rain screen or an open rain screen or ventilated rain screen. Uh, many of these can, can often be used very interchangeably with uh, the, the word ventilated facade. Uh, there's even some regional preference in terms of how these names get used, but many of these installations are, are considered ventilated rain screen facades. Uh, so as you can see in this particular image, this is a, a tile on a, a hotel exterior where there's an open joint. Uh, so of course, with many people on this call being uh, part of the tile industry, we think, well, where's the grout? And uh, in this particular case, this particular type of building uh, construction method, there is no grout joint. It's just using the tile itself uh, to create that outer shield of the building. And then the, the vent allows for water to stay away from the uh, main wall of the building. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in the, the overall parts of a uh, ventilated facade assembly. So as you can see here, there's a, the main wall. It's part of the, the construction assembly. And this could be made of brick, wood. It could be concrete. Uh, in many cases, this is a existing building that needs a, a facelift essentially. So it's a, a recladding project in a lot of cases with ventilated facades, which we'll, uh, we'll show some more of those as we go on. Um, so if you have the existing wall of a building or that outside main wall, uh, the next layer is often a thermal insulation, which is uh, fiberglass sheets, mineral wool, or uh, polystyrene. So a variety of different thermal insulations that could be affixed to the outside of the building. This actually helps with uh, a variety of uh, things from the environmental aspect. There's a substructure or framing, which you can see has just been added on, on this slide, that is the rail system for a ventilated facade. Uh, these are often anodized aluminum, natural aluminum, galvanized steel, stainless steel, and in some cases wood, depending on the, the construction method in the marketplace. And then there's the fixing method, which of course is where Bostic comes into play with a, uh, a chemical system or a chemical bonding system from Bostic, and then a variety of mechanical systems, or in some cases, combined mechanical and chemical systems, uh, depending on the, the needs of a specification. And then the facade or cladding material, which is uh, can be a regular porcelain tile, but in a lot of the marketplace, we're seeing gauge porcelain tile panels as well. So what you get next would be behind this uh, cladding material is an air cavity. And you can see where there's cool air down at the bottom of this cavity. And then that cool air essentially rises throughout the, um, the vent of the building, warming and neutralizing the air that's actually touching the outside of the building. So this is part of where that, that benefit comes from in terms of uh, energy efficiency. So the air cavity is, is generally from 20 to 30 centimeters and is in the realm of, that's it's about eight to 12 inches. And the air just telegraphs from the, the bottom to the top side throughout that open vent. 
So I'll talk a little bit now about some of the uh, benefits to the ventilated facade. And uh, you'll see that there's a variety of energy savings uh, that come with it as a result of the chimney effect and the materials that could be used and the ability to specify on the outside of a building uh, a material that is going to gain less solar heat. So in this particular building, in this image, the, the tiles that were used are a dark color, which really doesn't play towards uh, the reflection of heat. However, um, that's one of the, the methods that could be deployed as the lighter colored materials. Uh, there's acoustic insulation, reduced thermal transfer, condensation that's reduced in the, in the wall cavity. Uh, the material being further off of the wall diverts water from the base of the, the, the building or the foundation. So you have less water infiltration into the building and into the main wall. You provide structural protection to the uh, material uh, or the, the main wall surface as well. The thermal insulation, there's a, a little bit of a value that's gained by doing the, the cladding itself in terms of windbreak, uh, but the ability to leverage and use additional thermal uh, insulation actually ends up being another one of those benefits. And then of course there's design flexibility. So the chimney effect, we talked about that a little bit, but under basically under direct sunlight, when uh, sun shines down on the wall itself, you're gonna see air cycle in at the base of the wall, rise up the wall and heat, but also neutralize. So the air that's actually touching that main wall has a uh, more neutral effect than just being hot air touching the wall or in the, in the winter, cool air just touching the wall. So it acts as essentially a, a shade on a building in the summer and then like throwing a, a coat onto a, a building in the winter, improving the overall uh, thermal stability of a building and keeping interior temperatures a whole lot more stable uh, through this thermal movement. From an energy consumption perspective, uh, you can see in, in some cases, and of course there's a, a pretty broad range here that that pertains to more than just the use of a ventilated facade method, uh, but ventilated facade with proper thermal or optimized thermal with building orientation and window to wall ratios taken into consideration, uh, you can actually right size the HVAC system, uh, which can result in anywhere from 25 to 40% uh, reduction in, in overall HVAC use. So there's a, a reduction amount of uh, heat that buildings absorb and hot weather conditions. Uh, from that reflection of solar radiation. That's what you see in the, the image on the top right in terms of energy savings. In cold weather conditions, the ventilated walls retain heat a little bit better so that that vent where you see um, both the uh, arrows moving upward, that's essentially a, a more neutralized air, which then results in, in less reliance on heating. And uh, I mentioned the, the right sizing HVAC and mechanicals for a, a building as well can be done by, by leveraging a ventilated facade. From the, the rain screen feature of a ventilated facade is that the, uh, the facade essentially keeps water and moisture away from the building's structural wall. So as you can see in this image, there's a uh, gap that we call it out as uh, eight to, to 12 centimeters. Um, that is going to keep the rain away from the base of the building. This allows space for the moisture to be able to evaporate, uh, reduce the chance for water damage or, or efflorescence in the building's main wall. Um, most of these facade cladding materials are, are non-absorbent. And then of course, when it comes to porcelain tile, they're essentially uh, impervious as their, their classifications. Uh, and then that chimney effect from the, the prior slide where the air movement is, is cycling through the, the channel itself also reduces uh, that moisture and, and helps that uh, vent dry out very thoroughly, which can reduce uh, condensation, mold, as well as indoor humidity levels. Uh, we mentioned the ability to add in more layers of insulation, but as you can see uh, in this, this image, they're using a very heavy material. So uh, these metal structures or the metal uh, substructures are pretty tight spacing in this particular application but they still manage to add in exterior insulation in between these metal substructures, which improves building efficiency. And then they also have the ability to add electrical and plumbing utilities outside of the, the building beneath the cladding so that there can be major uh, edits made to uh, the mechanicals or, or electricals of the building, but have them concealed behind the cladding. 
So that helps from a, a standpoint of uh, building efficiency, uh, updating buildings, as well as that thermal insulation helps with uh, sound attenuation as well. So the ventilated facade, uh, and of course there's, there's a number of things that come into play as it pertains to uh, acoustics and the acoustic value that a, a facade drives for the outside of the building. Um, for one, there can be the uh, geometry of the facade components or you know, the number or location of balconies. Uh, you can see the, the tilts on uh, this image on the right where there's the uh, angled sections of the wall. All of those come into play with the with overall noise reflection, but the there's an acoustic value that comes from uh, a ventilated facade as well in terms of the way it's able to reflect external noise um, noise in buildings, especially uh, historically, maybe a little bit more pre-COVID than current, um, you know, especially in the downtown and urban areas, street noise is a constant and a, and a lot of noise leads to occupant uh, stress and, and uh, other occupant related issues. Uh, so considering the design of an outside of a building and the, the use of a facade material can really help control the outside or outdoor indoor transmission class of, of sound as it pertains to the, the incoming inside of a building. So the last couple of uh, benefits is, is uh, a few more, but the dead load of these types of materials is really low. So this allows for low weight materials. Uh, we talk just a couple of pounds per square foot in terms of gauge porcelain tile panels for the outside of the building or, or the facade of a building. And you think about that compared to brick or many veneer brick systems, uh, you really have a significantly reduced uh, dead load for a building. Uh, these materials also come with a, a really low amount of, of maintenance overall. They're pretty easy to repair in the big picture. Uh, these segments can be taken down and, and replaced depending on the fixing method or the attachment method to the outside of the building. Um, but they're they're lightweight and pretty easy to install with minimal dust or debris, um, including uh, in renovation applications. So I think Daniel will talk a little bit more about that when he talks about in more detail about some of the facade components in a few minutes. Um, but there's also life cycle that's that's improved by the um, use of a ventilated facade. This is going to improve or increase the life cycle of a building wall and the external structure as a result of really reduced overall thermal movement, uh, less cracking in these types of buildings, as well as less moisture that gets uh, into the wall systems as well as foundations. So they, they really provide a lot of benefits on that standpoint. Uh, then of course, when it comes to uh, the tile industry and uh, design flexibility, uh, there's a tremendous amount of design flexibility by designing with tiles. Um, so we'll say, you know, call it virtually endless design options. You still have to follow the technical data sheets from uh, manufacturers, uh, whether it's on the adhesive side or a tile manufacturer's side or any other components of a system uh, in order to uh, achieve the endless design options. And then, of course, the uh, the value. Uh, and, and this is really what tile brings to a, a building, both on the interior of buildings and uh, now more so than ever in terms of the exterior of buildings. Uh, tile's known for driving value. It's, it's not this, um, call it substandard flooring or wall covering material, and it's not a substandard uh, exterior cladding material. This is, this is really a top type of technology for interior and exterior surfaces. Uh, it, it drives a lot in terms of design, and good design adds a lot of value to buildings. Uh, in the ventilated facade method, it reduces some energy consumption, uh, which leads to improved indoor environmental qualities. It can lead to improved indoor air quality, as well as improving microclimates adjacent to the building in, in terms of reducing the uh, heat island effect uh, associated with the building. And you can think about that in terms of standing on, uh, on grass or concrete compared to standing on asphalt in the middle of the summer. Uh, there's a lot of heat island effect to the, the microclimate of asphalt in comparison to a, a lighter surface. So designing a building like this one's been designed with um, a tile material uh, really helps reduce the, the amount of heat gained in a, an overall area. So that's a lot of like the, the values that get driven from the interior buildings. Uh, there's also the sound association and the reduced sound um, 
as a result of the using gauge porcelain tiles, as well as something like Bosti set or the panel tax system. Both of those are going to uh, reduce sound transmission in their respective spaces. So that's a little bit about the, the background of ventilated facades, some of the benefits. And then from here, I'm gonna move over to uh, uh, have Daniel do some of the presentation and he'll pick up on a, a talk about the installation and fixing uh, methods and application uh, methods of panel tech and ventilated facades. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining and spending time with us. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the installation methods, the different installation methods that can be used for a ventilated facade. Uh, we have basically three uh, main uh, types of installation methods. It can be done mechanically with either uh, exposed uh, clips or, or rivets or screws. It can also be done mechanically, but with hidden uh, clips with hidden means. Uh, it can it can be done chemically with adhesives, or it can be done also uh, with a combination of chemical and mechanical. So we're going to go through the different installation methods and the challenges that that we face uh, with each of, of of these methods. We're going to start talking about uh, about the uh, mechanical installation methods, the, the exposed one with uh, rivets or screws. Uh, some of the challenges that, that we face when we uh, use this installation method, uh, the first one is the, the aesthetics, uh, because you need to uh, drill the, the front of the panel to put some kind of rivet or screw to, to hold it to the substructure. Um, that uh, uh, method, uh, in addition to the to the aesthetics of, of seeing the, the rivets or the screws, you also have the risk of uh, creating or, or, or promoting uh, rust stains. If the rivets used are not the proper material, they they can uh, lead to to rust. Um, uh, they they also can lead to uh, dirt, dirty uh, stains uh, because the dirt is going to accumulate in the holes of the of the rivets and then it's going to uh, go down when it rains or, or uh, uh, gets uh, uh, wet. Uh, another problem with this method is that you need special tools to do this installation because it's not easy to drill a panel, especially if we're talking about uh, hard panels like like thin gauge porcelain tiles. Uh, you can weaken the panel uh, by doing this, uh, and that can lead to to a higher percentage of damaged panels. Uh, sometimes when the installers are trying to use this method, they break the panel. So that's that's a that's a big problem, especially with these panels. Uh, everybody knows that uh, are not uh, uh, cheap at all, right? We also have a lot of noise and dust generation with this process because of the drilling process. Uh, so that's that's also a, a, a disadvantage, uh, especially now that uh, OSHA is is very concerned about uh, dust in in the job sites. Uh, this is not a, a good situation. Uh, but I think that one of the most important challenges or risks with this uh, method is that all the stress is going to be concentrated in few spots. In those spots where you have the rivet or the screw, um, uh, all the stress is going to be uh, uh, concentrated there. So if you have a big panel and maybe you have uh, 10 to 12 points of, of contact, all the stress is going to be focused in these specific spots uh, all the wind loads and the, the pressure and the, uh, and the suction, uh, and that can that can uh, lead to to a failure in the facade. Uh, it all it also can limit the expansion and contraction of the panel, especially when the installation is done is not done properly. It's more time consuming and it ends up being more expensive. 
Uh, and another problem that you can have with all uh, with mechanical means is that uh, you can have vibration uh, because of the wind. Uh, the panel is gonna is gonna vibrate. It's gonna hit the substructure, the aluminum substructure, and that's gonna create a lot of noise. Uh, I, I mean, I, I uh, personally um, experienced that situation in a in a hotel that uh, had a ventilated facade and it was installed. Uh, with this type of uh, method, and and at night the the wind and the noise that you can hear because of this vibration was uh, extremely high. Then we have uh, the the use of um, mechanical uh, clips that can be both hidden or exposed. Uh, they have also some challenges, uh, especially the the hidden one. You need special tools to uh, to do this kind of installation because you need to uh, uh, make some kind of back group or edge group to the panel. Uh, this method cannot be used in all types of panels because the thinner panels uh, will not allow the, the the installer to do this this grooving process. Uh, you weaken for sure, you're going to weaken the panel. And I'm going to show you some pictures of, of panels that broke because of uh, this uh, kind of method. Uh, it, you can also have a lot of vibration, a lot of noise, uh, same as the previous method. Uh, and again, all the stress is concentrated in few spots. Uh, so the same the same situation can be uh, seen as in the previous one. And And one of the biggest problems with this method, especially when talking about uh, uh, brittle panels like porcelain tiles is that if the panel breaks and it's only hold it uh, uh, on the edges or in the corners uh, with these clips and it breaks in the middle, the panel is going to do this, so it's going to fall. And, and that's a big risk, especially when talking about facades. Uh, of course, you have a lot of uh, damaged panels as well, just as in the previous method. You have a lot of noise and dust generation, even more than in the previous one because of the back grooving process. Uh, it's very time consuming and it's also more expensive. Uh, the, the, the other method, the, the one on the right, and the one with the exposed clips, that one is, is uh, faster and easier than the previous two uh, because you don't need special tools to do it. Uh, it's it's easier than, than the other ones. Uh, but the problem is that the clips can be seen in the front of the facade. Uh, that can also lead to dirt stripes uh, on, on the front of the panel. Uh, vibration is also an issue. Uh, you also have the same risk of, of or the same problem that if the panel breaks, it can fall. And again, all the stress is, is concentrated in, in few spots, in those spots where the clips are located. These are some examples of, uh, of facades installed with uh, mechanical methods. Uh, you can see that the facades are really nice. The panels are really nice. Even the installation is, is, is good. I mean, it, it, it was done properly. But the only thing that, that uh, stands out is, is uh, the mechanical clips. Uh, sometimes you get uh, uh, the color of the clip very similar to the color of the panel, but most of the times you don't. And then you have these uh, hidden clips that I was talking about, that you need to do this uh, group on the on the uh, edge of the panel. Uh, so think about uh, three eighths of an inch thick porcelain tile. So you do this this uh, group. Uh, that is going to be an eighth of an inch thick. So that means that the panel, uh, it's going to have one eighth of an inch thick in the front, the group in the middle with the same thickness, and then another eighth of an inch thick uh, of thickness thickness of, on the back. So do you think that that such a thin layer of porcelain tile can be or will be able to, to hold all the stress and all the uh, forces that are going to be acting in the facade, like wind loads and everything. Most of the cases, it won't. Uh, it, it, 
and it, it will result in something like uh, what we're seeing in these pictures. Uh, that can, of course, lead to, to some panels breaking and, and falling, which, as I said, is not good. The risk of damaging uh, the property or, or somebody else is, is really high. So now we're going to talk about the chemical method. The chemical method, um, which is basically uh, made with adhesives, is uh, uh, to me the best method to install uh, ventilated facade, especially when talking about thin gauge porcelain tiles. It, it is a discrete method. Uh, you won't see anything on the front uh, side of the facade or on the face of the of the panel. Uh, you won't have screws, rivets, or any other kind of uh, mechanical uh, clip or, or, or system. You don't need uh, special tools or even electricity to do this kind of installation because the panel is uh, bonded with adhesives uh, that can be applied with uh, traditional caulking guns. Uh, so you don't have dust or noise generation in, in the uh, and the job site because of the uh, of this process uh, there's no weakening of the panel which is one of the biggest uh, things with the chemical method uh, you can also install thinner panels as i mentioned the thin gauge porcelain tiles cannot be installed with uh, most most mechanical methods uh, and and one of the most uh, important things about this method is that you're going to be able to distribute the stress among all the adhesive bits, so it's not going to be concentrated in few spots as in the previous uh, methods, and that's going to create um, uh, or that's going to result in a facade that's going to be more resistant to vibration and tremors. The adhesive is going to remain elastic, so it's going to allow the panels to expand and contract depending on the weather conditions without debonding, without deforming the panel and without breaking. Uh, there are no thermal breaches, which is also a good thing when you're uh, looking for uh, thermal uh, uh, insulation uh, as one of the benefits of a ventilated facade. Uh, it's fast, it's easy, and it's going to allow you uh, a more uh, flexibility in terms of the design. I'm going to show you a quick video about the installation methods and then we will continue with the presentation. Bostic is an active and innovative player in the field of bonding exterior wall cladding panels for ventilated facades. There are different installation methods for the panels, including the use of screws or rivets through the surface of the panel, as well as visible or hidden clips placed at specific spots of the panel. Most panels can also be 100% chemically bonded to the substructure, while some projects will require a combination between mechanical and chemical bond. There are a lot of benefits on using specialized adhesives to install the panels, including aesthetics, there are no unsightly screws that can eventually lead to dirty stripes. Faster, cleaner, and less noisy, as there's no need to drill or back groove the panel. Safer, no weakening of the panel and the stresses and loads are evenly distributed among all the adhesive beads, instead of concentrating them on specific spots. Thinner and lighter panels can be used. The elastic adhesive is more resistant to vibrations and tremors, including expansions and contractions on the panel. There are no cold bridges, and many more. Even when using mechanical methods, it is advisable to include the use of a specialized adhesive, as it will help eliminate any problems caused from wind-induced vibration sounds, which are hard and expensive to repair afterwards. Bostic Panel Tack System has a proven 25-year track record, installed on thousands of commercial projects. It is one of the most specified ventilated facade installation systems around the world, approved to be used with most panels commonly used for facade applications. With thousands of successful projects done around the world, and many of them in North America, Bostic Panel Tack is by far the best choice.
For more information on this and many other Bostic solutions, please visit our website or call your Bostic representative. Okay, we're back. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about uh, the chemical bonding installation process a little bit. Uh, to be honest, it, it is very, very easy to do it. Uh, you have already the substructure in, in place, which is, as Adam uh, mentioned, normally made with uh, galvanized uh, uh, aluminum, uh, anodized aluminum, sorry. Uh, so you just need to wipe the, the substructure, clean it with one of our uh, cleaners uh, slash primers, which is primer panel tech. Uh, you in, in, I mean, depending on the type of panel, you will need sometimes a specific primer. When we're talking about um, um, thin gauge porcelain tiles with a back mesh, you just need the same cleaner or primer than that we use for the substructure. So it's only one primer. Uh, you use it for the substructure, you use it to clean the back of the panel uh, in, in the area where it's going to be in contact with the adhesive. You put the double-sided foam tape uh, to the uh, substructure. Uh, here you can see it in the middle of the picture with the Bostic logo on it. Uh, that tape is going to have two purposes. The first one is to hold the panel in place while, while the adhesive cures. And the second one is to provide a, a separation between the panel and the substructure of an eighth of an inch, which is the thickness that we need in the adhesive so it can perform in the best uh, possible way. Then uh, you need to put a bit of adhesive uh, alongside the tape remove the release paper on the tape and put the panel. It's that easy. We actually have made some uh, uh, um, testing to see the installation process between our system, the chemical system, the mechanical system, and also the traditional uh, installation system with motors to a facade. And our system can be uh, three to six times faster than, than the other methods. So that, of course, translates into savings, uh, not only in terms of materials, but also in terms of labor. Uh, this is the system. Uh, uh, I mean, it is the same thing that, that I just explained. You have the wall, you have the rails or the substructure. Uh, then you put, uh, you, I mean, you, you use a primer for the substructure and the panel. You put the, the, the adhesive, the tape, the panel, and, and that's it. it. It's really, really simple. Uh, sometimes we uh, talk to, to architects or installers that are going to use the system for the first time, and uh, they think that it's going to be harder than. Uh, the regular installations they are used to. But to be honest, uh, uh, the truth is that it is not. It's actually simpler and easier. Uh, another thing that we uh, face a lot in the market is that the, the contractors or the architects, sometimes they believe that the mechanical systems are safer than the chemical, uh, which is not true. In fact, uh, some testing that uh, we have done and uh, some of our customers have done in the US uh, have proven that, that our system is actually 50% or performs 50% better or stronger than mechanical, most mechanical systems. So that's also a good thing. Uh, I'm going to show you another video uh, with the installation process using our system and then we will continue with the presentation. Bostic Panel Tack System has a proven 25-year track record installed on thousands of commercial projects. 
The installation process is quite simple. First, clean the aluminum substructure with primer panel tack. Pre-treat the back of the panel with the appropriate primer or cleaner, depending on the type of panel. Apply Bostix foam tape to the substructure. Apply the adhesive in a triangular bead with the aid of the V-shaped nozzle included with the adhesive. Remove the release paper on the foam tape. Put the panel in place and press it firmly into the adhesive. That's it. The project is finished. For more information on this and many other Bostic solutions, please visit our website or call your Bostic representative. Okay. Uh, so you, you saw already on our videos uh, some of the projects that we have done recently uh, with this system. Here are some other pictures. Uh, Adam, please feel free to to add something if you want. Uh, in this one, uh, this project specifically was uh, installed uh, with our system and Tingesh porcelain tiles from Laminum. Uh, the white panels are all uh, Laminum uh, panels. So what you'll see as we roll through some of these pictures, there's a, a, a number of different types of projects that have uh, been completed uh, all over North America using a, a variety of different material types and a variety of different design types. So as we move to, to wrap up this, this presentation, as you can see, uh, we'll walk through a number of these different images and just kind of give you an overview of what some of the possibilities are. Uh, not all markets are going to do high-rise applications like what you're seeing right here. Uh, you will see a, a variety of different applications of, of these types of materials. And, um, you know, this, this example right here, low-rise, mid-rise, you'll see residential applications. Uh, you'll see uh, refits on hospitals and on uh, retail spaces and, and shopping centers as a as, as project types of these are pretty, pretty prevalent then. Yeah, and, and one of the very interesting things about this system is that uh, it can be used with new or uh, retrofit or remodeling projects. For instance, this picture that we have here is a, is a shopping mall uh, that they decided to uh, redo the, all the facade because it was looking old. They wanted to, to give it a, a new look. Uh, so they did it without uh, shutting down the, the, the mall. Uh, they did it uh, by sections. And since everything was uh, done uh, with our system, the, the process was uh, uh, quite easy and, and fast without disrupting the, the normal operation of the mall. Same thing with this one, uh, this one. Even some hotels have done that. That same, some have have uh, went uh, go through that same process. Uh, this one right here, it's a very interesting one because it's it, it is a small project, uh, but it is a really heavy one. It's a it's a, a mural um, made with uh, natural stones, different types of natural stones from marble to uh, to volcanic stone and uh, it's all bonded to cement boards uh, all the pieces are bonded to uh, i think uh, two by four cement boards and then the boards are bonded to the wall uh, as a ventilated facade used in our system and the overall weight of this mu mural is is higher over uh, two tons so that's that's a lot for such a small uh, installation so uh, it, go back to that one quick, Daniel. Um, sure. This, this particular application is not really necessarily expansive, obviously, being that it's, um, I mean, you're seeing the entirety of the uh, the mural here, 
but it's extremely heavy. So in this particular case, what you're seeing here weighs over two tons and it's held up by this panel tech system. Um, so this was a kind of a, a design um, installation at a, um, I guess, a, a garden or whatnot. And I uh, really wanted to showcase the amount of weight that this system can hold. Uh, the, the weight ends up being a function of uh, the inches of bead of the sealant or the, the adhesive and the amount of space in between the aluminum substructures. So uh, if they're two foot on center, they're gonna hold less weight than if they are one foot on center and you're running more adhesive and, and more substructures. So uh, I just wanted to kind of put that point into this, this particular image. Right, and in this one in specific, uh, the, the frames were um, separated one foot uh, on, on center. Uh, this system can also be used for uh, sealing or soffit uh, applications, like the ones we, we have here. Uh, retrofit uh, projects like this hotel. Uh, again, uh, uh, high rise, or uh, uh, this one is a restaurant, the front facade and the ceiling of this restaurant. Yeah, so go back uh, quickly. Daniel, would you go back to that one? Um, so in this particular one, you're seeing a, a variety of materials that are that are bonded. You have uh, the, the stone on the front face, which of course plays into the, the high-end design of uh, this particular space. And then you have um, an inverted application where the panels have been bonded to a ceiling, so holding uh, the weight straight down and I believe that's the the panels that you see in the um, kind of the top left of the the image on the the restaurant uh, where they're the light brown color so you've got a, a few different ways that this could be used and then the image on the right being a, a hotel application uh, where it was used in a you know call it a mid to high rise application there Uh, one of the things that Adam mentioned during uh, his part of the presentation was uh, uh, design flexibility, which can be seen in this amazing project. Um, all the uh, this uh, sphere was made with uh, uh, our system and no mechanical at all. These ones right here as well. This one, which is one of the most awarded uh, uh, projects from the architectural point of view. Uh, here in, in Mexico. Uh, it was also 100% installed with our system. Uh, this is a, These are Coca-Cola's headquarters in, in Mexico. Uh, how they look, how they are now after uh, going through the, the, this uh, remodelation. And one of the interesting things about this project is that all those panels that you see in the facade are photovoltaic panels, so they, they are also generating electricity. This is another great example of a hotel renovation. Uh, this, is, this was a very old and, to be honest, a bad-looking uh, motel in, in Mexico City. Uh, the owners decided to, uh, to give it a, ma a makeup and, and, and make it look better. Uh, so they they went through the, the process of uh, changing all the facade using our system. And this is how it looks now. Uh, it, it also allows them to uh, allow them to put new uh, installation facilities behind the panels, as, as Adam mentioned in uh, as, as one of the benefits of this system as well. This is still part of the same project. So you're seeing and, a number of different types of projects that have been done with the uh, panel tax system as well as a, a variety of panel types and gauge porcelain tile panels as well as natural stones and regular tiles and a little bit about the uh, overall system uh, as, as it pertains to Bostic and the different elements that uh, come into play from Bostic. So I think we're in the process of, of wrapping up here at the, the last uh, last couple of slides and uh, want to move over to a, um, you know, a 
I guess a, a place for you to gather more information. Uh, so you have a, a subsite from Ballstick, a few more videos we have uh, on YouTube as well. So you can make a, a visit to YouTube and then type in Ballstick Panel Tech and see a few videos as well as the uh, ballstick.com uh, site for Panel Tech. And then Daniel Sanchez, myself, or Chad Bulin, our Director of Tech Service are all uh, equipped to, to further discuss these types of systems and uh, the Bostic system, as well as uh, selecting the right elements for your projects. So we know that these types of applications are, are done um, in, in certain markets, maybe not all. Uh, in some cases, you have tile installers that are working uh, these particular exterior applications, and then other cases, it may be other trades. Uh, but we wanted to put this information out to the tile industry, as uh, of course, we've been a a part of for many, many years. And uh, we wanna help the tile industry put tile in more places and take market share from other types of uh, materials. Uh, tile is one of the best building materials that exists in, the, uh, in terms of construction. And we really wanted to help uh, provide the ability to do tile installations easier, faster, uh, less overall cost, uh, more speed, overall improvements, and then provide a, a variety of additional benefits to the installing contractors, as well as the end users and specifiers. So we're, we're really focused on driving value throughout uh, all aspects of the, the value chain. And uh, whether it's the, the sound abatement aspect or the ability to pour a leveler that's super flat, uh, like an ultra fluid self-smoothing leveler, uh, high performance mortars that get you back on on traffic on floors in four to six hours um, with a, with a lot of stability to them and a long pot life, or a system like this and the panel tech that allows you to take uh, uh, the installations of of certain types of tiles uh, outside of a building as well and and provide continuity of design for the inside to the outside and bring a lot of value to the buildings uh, for both spaces. So. Thank you guys very much for, for joining today. And uh, Jim, I don't know if we have any questions that we want to run through or not, but uh, I definitely am very appreciative to the uh, NTCA for putting these events together and, and allowing Bostic to, to take a part of them. Very interesting, guys. Uh, great, uh, great product uh, information for um, members, designers, architects, anyone that is in attendance here. We do have some questions. I just wanted to... Um, uh, go over a couple of them and, and have you guys answer them. So, can you go over existing wood siding? Um, you know, for a, a, a ventilated facade, can it go over a wood pro, pro product? There's existing wood siding already. Yes. So uh, this system can be used also for uh, uh, wooden panels uh, and also for. Uh, wooden substructure so the only thing is that you you will require a specific primer but yes you can use it for for that kind of uh, uh, materials as well when you're thinking so, about uh, wood siding um you know if, the, if there's a building that has a wood siding that is just aged and, and maybe the owner is sick of scraping and painting and doing the repairs and maintenance uh, both the metal or wood substructures can come into play as the uh, attachment method to the, the the face of the existing building, and then a gauge porcelain tile panel or other other panel type can go over top of that, fully encapsulating that existing and historic wood surface. Uh, there's a vent chamber that exists that, that needs to exist so that airflow can pass in between the old wood substructure and the new tile panel and allow for, uh, call it air exchange and the ability to dry out. But yeah, that's that's definitely um, you know, well, there, you is, take, there is a system that will work. There is a system, a system that will work. work. Right? All right, great, great. Um, and and again, please notice these email addresses and websites to uh, check with them and ask more questions. Jot them down. Um, we'll get to as many as we can. Um, are the panels actually um, stable, spanning across the uh, adhesion points? So I'll take a, the first pass of that one, and Daniel, you can add a little bit more. Um, so the benefit to the adhesive points in comparison to mechanical fastening is that you have the, the continuous bead of adhesive throughout the entire length of the panel itself. So if your panel is, is, say it's one meter by three meter, 
you're running a bead of the adhesive the entire length of that one meter in a horizontal application and it's touching continuously. If you were doing a mechanical fastening, it may only be touching twice in the same place that you'd have a continuous bead of that adhesive. So uh, in, in terms of overall performance, that's, that ends up being a, a, a lot of benefit in terms of having that continuous bond. Then uh, aside from that, the strength of a system like this really depends on the spacing of the aluminum substructure, the, the substructure. If you're doing uh, two foot on center, you have half the strength or, or less strength than you're going to have if you're doing one foot on center in terms of your spacing. So Daniel, I don't know if I missed anything in terms of adding to that type of answer. No, I, I think I think you cover everything. Um, most of the times, uh, the distance between the the rail systems is to to fit. That's the most uh, commonly used, but sometimes you need to go uh, less than that, if, uh, feet and a half or one feet, uh, depending on the type of panel and depending on the type of, of installation. But yes, uh, the, the, the benefit of having a, a continuous <laughs> bit of adhesive is that it's gonna hold the panel, but it's also gonna al allow the panel to move a little bit, expand and contract when it uh, receives uh, uh, changes in temperature because of uh, sunlight or whatever, uh, something that normally doesn't happen with uh, the mechanical methods. Great, um, trying to get through as many as we can here, guys. So there are quite a few questions that were going along with this question, and that is, um, are any of these systems wind rated designed for tropical winds and storms? So there's a, a variety of different types of wind ratings and there's local codes that come into play from a lot of different marketplaces. Um, we have some testing that has uh, been successful in certain wind applications or, or high wind applications, uh, but a lot of those come down to uh, the individual panel type selected. So it may vary from one type of gauge porcelain tile to another type of gauge porcelain tile as well as to a non-gauged porcelain tile or a traditional tile type. So uh, we do have a, a variety of wind resources associated with uh, this system, but that's gonna vary from, I think, from local market to local market. So it's not gonna be a one size fits all system for every single marketplace and every single project that uh, somebody wants to use. But uh, in terms of overall application, this so, is- so so really Adam and Daniel, what I would what I would recommend then is they contact if they're working with a designer or an architect uh, that they contact Bostic to work with them on the panel, the product they're using, the system they're using, and everything. Right. And so if if they're trying to promote this, they should get in touch with Bostic and have your assistance there helping to uh, make sure it's done correctly. Correct. That is correct. Absolutely. So we'd be yep. part of that that uh, that process as well as uh, a panel manufacturer and uh, engineers associated with the project. Right, great. Um, I, 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 this, was, this came in during your, your presentation here on uh, mechanical anchors, but then other than fastening through the face, what about other mechanical fasteners like the T31 anchors or the keel anchors, otherwise known as bind, what are they, blind anchors? I'm not sure what he's referring to though. Do you know? During your presentation, you were talking about mechanical and, and bonding, bonding through the face. Yeah. So I'm not familiar with those uh, that that you mentioned, but there are a lot of different types of mechanical uh, uh, systems out there. Uh, most of the times, they perform well, not as well as as chemical but they, they do perform well. Uh, if you have a specific information about those uh, systems and you wanna share it with, with us, we, we can give you more uh, uh, information as it, how it compares with our system and, and the benefits and, and disadvantages of each of it. I, I just asked them to email you guys and uh, uh, so uh, for more detail and more in-depth answers to that, so. Yeah, okay. and um, comparing the, the variety of mechanical fasteners in the markets, there's great ones and there's not so great ones. And that's part of the benefit of the, the Bostic system is the, the continuity 
this product was launched in Europe in 1989 and uh, into Central America in 2010. And uh, it's, it's really an unchanged system uh, that's high quality. So, uh, you know, while certain mechanical fasteners may come and go, this, this is uh, one that has stood the test of time. Yeah, and another, sorry, Jim, another important thing that can maybe give them a, a little bit more confidence in the system is that this system has been proved and approved to be used with most of the panel manufacturers that uh, are out there for ventilated facades, uh, including Neolit, Lamina, uh, Cosentino, and, and some others. So, uh, uh, I mean, this is something that has been out there for many years and that has a lot of testing behind it. Great, and that's very important. So, um, does Bostic supply the metal channels as well as the adhesives? And if not, where would you recommend or how do you recommend them going about getting these channels? Okay, so we, we provide all the adhesive system, the adhesive, the tape, and the, and the primers. Uh, the, the rail system needs to be provided by a rail manufacturer. We don't do that, but we do have uh, several uh, uh, partners uh, uh, that we work with uh, that we can recommend if, if necessary. And that's kind of a, a regional perspective. There's a, there's a variety of different suppliers throughout the country on this front. So uh, we may make a different recommendation for the panhandle of Florida than we would for uh, San Francisco. But regardless, there's a, a couple of different solutions that we could offer. But for sure you assist them in finding the right solution or the right people to work with or the system, correct? correct. Absolutely. Yes. And I guess the last question we have today, guys, is, is there a minimum panel thickness? So the minimum panel thickness is probably driven by a particular code. Um, I know that there's been some changes to the uh, building code that have been accepted for uh, a next revision in 2021 that allows for uh, thinner panels to be used for the, the tile fronts as well as uh, panels that are larger than the historic sizes. Uh, but I would say that that's something, again, on the, the local building code front that would need to be referenced from a local market perspective. Um, but you'll see, uh, I think, uh, with, with the changes to building codes that are uh, imminent for uh, the tiling industry for the exterior and facade marketplaces, you'll see uh, more of these types of specifications unfold and uh, another system to be able to offer uh, your customer base and your architects, designers, and constructors in your marketplace. Uh, with uh, the panel tax system. And, and it also has to do with the panel manufacturer, that type of panel, if it, if it has a mesh on the back or not. I mean, there are different um, uh, uh, things that you need to consider before uh, deciding uh, the type and the thickness of the panel. All right, gentlemen. Um, Really interesting systems you have, really uh, a, a new way of cladding and uh, doing facade that uh, I think is fairly new here in the US, but I know you've been doing it all over the country, all over the world, excuse me. Very excited to see where this goes. Um, everybody, as long as you're still on here, jot down those email addresses and um, don't hesitate to send me an email or, and uh, I'll contact you, I'll connect you with Adam and uh, Daniel and uh, we'll get more information for you. So thanks guys, everybody, thank you. Uh, be safe, enjoy your Thanksgiving weekend, and uh, we look forward to our next presentation in uh, December. So thanks guys. Thanks all. Thank you everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye everyone. Bye.